starting this video, um, we're going to be looking at two diametrically opposed concepts. One is the idea of efficiency, or the idea of reducing waste, such as the amount of time it takes to do something. Now, the opposing idea to this would be a matrix of time wasting, a structure designed to waste to time, increase the waste and the amount of time it takes to do something. To begin our understanding of the time matrix designed to waste time and, of course, naturally make things by and large inefficient, we'll look to the Code of Canon Law, Book 5, the Temporal Goods of the Church. <coughs> to pursue its proper purposes, the Catholic Church by innate right is able to acquire, retain, administer, and alienate temporal goods independently from civil power. The proper purposes are principally to order divine worship, to care for the decent support of the clergy and other ministers, and to exercise works of the sacred apostolate and of charity, especially for the needy. The universal church and the apostolic see, particular churches as well as any other juridic person, public or private, are subjects capable of acquiring, retaining, administering, and alienating temporal goods according to the norm of law. Under the supreme authority of the Roman Pontiff, ownership of goods belongs to that juridic person which has acquired them legitimately. All temporal goods which belong to the universal church and the apostolic see or other juridic persons in the church are ecclesiastical goods and are governed by the governing or by the following canons and their own statutes. The temporal goods of a pub, private juridic person are governed by its own statutes but not by these canons unless other provision is expressly made. In the following canons, the term church signifies not only the universal church or the apostolic see, but also any public juridic person in the church unless it otherwise it is otherwise apparent from the context or the nature of the matter. So we've gone over a variety of different uh, elements to this particular section <coughs> of the canon code in previous videos. However, for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on the concept of time and its relation to this alienation of temporal goods. Now, when somebody alienates something, it means they put a lien against it, which is usually only understood in terms of real estate. But in this context, it is in fact in placing a lien not just on the goods of time, temporal goods, but also on time itself. When it comes to this idea of putting a lien on time, well, it's not like real estate where you would put a lien on a property and then somebody has to essentially pay back that lien. And if until they do, they can't, say, mortgage the house, they can't pull out loans, they can't buy new things, they have to pay, pay off that lien first. Well, technically speaking, it's a lien on credit history where you have to pay off a lien first before you can do all that stuff. But a lien on a house is virtually the same thing where the house itself can't be um, can't be sold, bought, uh, traded, or any otherwise. Because if it were to be sold, then those that sale would go towards paying off the lien. So that's what a lien is. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to put a lien on time. But you can conceptualize it this way. If somebody pose, imposes a lien on your time, they're basically stating that you have to pay back a debt through your time. And however large that debt is, the longer it will take to pay off. Meaning, um, if I guess a good analogy would be if somebody decides that they're going to sacrifice their time to pay off a debt, say, doing different types of types of labor for the person, what some would call essentially a slave, because they're not being essentially um, given anything in return for their work. Well, that's the idea of a lien against time. It's a lien against somebody's future, and they have to pay it back essentially through 
giving up their time, as it were. Now that's very similar to our current understanding of what slavery is, and basically is that. Of course, we also don't really know where this lean against time actually comes from, or what the quantity of it actually is, because most of it was done through fraud and in secrecy. So according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, <clears throat> temporal is of or relating to grammatical tense or a distinction of time. Of or relating to time as distinguished from space. Of or relating to the sequence of time or to a particular time. So, temporal goods. Now this time matrix that we're talking about is essentially speaking a system developed to enforce the lien against people's time to suck up and to waste to waste their time but also to get them to donate or give over their time towards someone else's benefit and uh, there are many components to the time matrix we won't cover all of them here and I'm sure most when they conceptualize this will go around in their everyday lives and see all kinds of other elements of the time matrix. Things designed to not only waste time, but also to take time away from others for a essentially imposed lean that they don't know exists. And not to mention, it's in many ways criminal. But the important concept here is that we have a great deal of structure built around us and things in place to follow designed to essentially waste our time and steal it. So this according to the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, 5th edition, at Wordneck, matrix is a situation or surrounding substance within which something else originates, develops, or is contained. The womb, the formative cells or tissue of a specialized structure such as a hair, nail, claw, or tooth. Now we go to Merriam-Webster for definition of matrix. We have something resembling a mathematical matrix, especially in rectangular arrangement of elements into rows and columns. Another word for that could be compartmentalization. An array of circuit elements such as diodes and transistors for performing a specific function. And then a main clause that contains a subordinate clause. One type of a matrix that is designed to waste our time or was designed to wait and force the lean on time to steal our time as it were is the internet controlled from these data centers these data centers uh, are situated at certain places and they are organized with that perspective in mind that's the reason why many will say that the internet used to be more useful than it is now but yet still many waste their time on it. They're not exactly wasting their time. What they're doing is giving their time over to the benefit of someone else through their attention and many other avenues through efforts that they give over freely, not realizing it. So in that structure, the internet itself is a, a temporal good that has been alienated time-based good. And in addition, when it comes to the internet, there are many overlays that tell you who the hand is behind this alienation of our temporal goods. And one of those is the overlay of the initial point, or IP. Now, your initial point where you enter the network is used to track your physical location and to deny access to particular websites or services, as many know, depending on where your initial point is. So there's a lot of services out there, just like a VPN or virtual private network, which allow you to hide your initial point. So that way you can go and access things and content that would otherwise be denied to you. On the other hand, if you route your IP, and it 
uh, masks it to a different country and then you want to access something in your own country, you may be denied that for the um, excuse that you can't be verified as a human. You see that a lot, but they're actually denying it based off of your initial point. And the initial points are all based around the entities of public juridical persons, otherwise known as governments, which are all subsidiary entities of the United Nations, which is also in turn a public juridic person. As it was stated in that canon code, public juridic persons are primary mechanisms to the alienation of temporal goods, as well as private juridic persons, etc. Now travel itself is a very good example of this time wasting and time stealing matrix but specifically towards the element of time wasting. The travel mechanisms, mechanisms that we have set up today specifically designed to negate the benefits of fast transportation by wasting people's time through arbitrary congestion that is in fact imposed upon the travel mechanism. Today we have extremely fast modes of travel. <clears throat> However, the faster the mode of travel and the more economical, the more it's controlled through a centralized entity that you have to go through. Essentially speaking, you have airports, which you have to go through to get to the extremely fast travel mechanism of the airplane. And everybody knows that the airports are tedious. Of course, they're called airports. Now, a carport is actually the, a parking lot or a garage, as far as that term's used. And that's not the tedious element with vehicles, but still cars, you know, arguably are a very fast mode of transportation. You also have buses, bus terminals, not called bus ports, although they probably should be, but they're called bus terminals. So a lot of these modern modes of transportation that we have today are highly controlled and regulated. They have a time matrix placed over them for the alienation of temporal goods, usually under one excuse or another. But either way, that is actually their purpose. Their purpose is not to be efficient and is not to better facilitate travel. It's actually the opposite. It's designed to waste your time because when people can travel more economically, everything else speeds up and thus there will be a problem when it comes to the imposed alienation on time. Now, when it comes to airports specifically, as we know, when you go to the airport, you're supposed to show up early and then sit around and wait. Now, there's usually going to be issues that arise because of how uh, rigid and inflexible and inefficient airports actually are run. So you might be waiting around for a while because of delays and many other issues, and they won't, of course, tell you everything that's going on behind the scenes, whether or not the, um, well, sometimes, as I've experienced in airports, sometimes they say, oh, the windshield broke on the plane, so we have to get that switched out with a new plane or get the windshield fixed or something like that, right? So you're sitting around waiting, and that's wasting your time. And then when you go to board, or I guess before you get there early, when you get there early, you have to, you know, get through all check-in lines and you have to do all that, which not only wastes your time, but it also saps your energy. And so you're already tired when you go to sit down in the uncomfortable seats and wait for them to tell you that your flight is being delayed. And you're going to have to keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Now, when you actually do board the plane and take off, that's not the end of it, because when you land, you have more checks and more things to go through and you can't just leave. Now, inevitably, in this highly inefficient system, there will be mistakes, and then you're going to have to waste your time trying to fix their mistakes, such as lost luggage or any of the myriad of other things that people are well aware of as happening at airports. And that's specifically designed because they are designed to be inefficient, and that's specifically designed to waste your time. Not, of course, to waste the time of the people who work there, Except, yes, in fact, it does equally waste the time of people that work there because they could be better off doing other things, being more efficient with their own capabilities, and it is essentially stealing time from them as well. And all of these mechanisms, although they seem arbitrary, are really designed for that idea of alienation of temporal goods, 
Of course, after you land and finally get out of the airport, you get loaded into a taxi or some other mode of transportation where if it's public transportation, such as buses or trains, then you're probably going to have to deal with the similar circumstances you had at the airport. Of course, if it's a vehicle, such as a taxi or a private car, then you're probably going to have to sit in traffic from all the other travelers after you get out, of course, the highly congested parking lot. And then you'll finally, when you get to your destination, you'll be so tired that it's going to take a lot longer for you to recover from the energy and time drain that you had to go through, thus negating all the effects of the rapid transport of the aeroplane. Now, of course, modern modes of transportation, arguably, are better than, say, horses or walking or bicycles or some of the other outdated, as they'd say, modes of transportation. However, when a lot of these time matrices are implanted to their fullest extent, often the older modes of transportation can in fact become quicker. Sometimes it is quicker to walk or ride a bicycle. Not so much, of course, ride a horse because that's a whole other issue, especially when you're talking about giant cities where you might be sitting in traffic for hours and some people just get fed up and decide to walk or take a bicycle. And that's why you find a lot of people that live in big cities have never learned how to drive. Of course, on the other hand, there's all kinds of ways that you can implant, especially in cities, time matrices onto other modes of transportation, like removing bike paths, restricting bike routes, etc. Now, a day is more than ever, possibly, but who knows, depending on, of course, where you've lived or traveled. Uh, vehicle vehicular congestion seriously and dramatically cuts down on the time gained by the uh, by the use of automobiles. Of course, automobiles themselves are inefficient and could be made more efficient, but that would be contrary to the alienation of temporal goods on behalf of that document that I just read. And so, any efficiency with vehicles is often negated through intentionally convoluted and um, faulty uh, construction, which is designed based off that time matrix. And then, of course, naturally, the congestion on highways, as we know, can be fixed, but it's not about the fixing of it. In fact, that was a purposefully in placed mechanism to waste time. Our next time matrix is that of the school system, the classroom, as it were. Now this is designed not just as a time waster, but essentially a time thief. The ability to steal people's time under that lien against temporal goods. Temporal goods, of course, relate to, in addition, people's services that they can render through the use of their time. In the school system, Free labor is, well, it's not really free, but labor is extorted from students, and they not only waste their time, but they give over their time to someone else's benefit. The school system is not built to benefit the children that are in it. One of the primary examples of the time-wasting aspects of school are arbitrary exams that are set up, of course, we're all familiar with, in the most inefficient way possible. Exams, tests, and the endless amount of paperwork that one has to do in the school system is training for the same exams, tests, and endless amount of paperwork that people then are forced to do outside of the school system, say through so-called governmental sources, and they're all imposed by public and private juridic entities on behalf of that alienation of temporal good mission. Now, the inefficiency, of course, of the school system is specifically designed because this all revolves around the control of people's time. And in the school system, every single component of time that is afforded to students by simply natural existence is regulated down to even when they can go to use the restroom, uh, the bathroom, etc., to when they're supposed to go to their next class, Every single component of time throughout this egregious system 
is regulated based off of time wasting when in fact the school system itself is designed to waste and to steal the time of children all the way through adulthood and I guess I suppose beyond until you no longer are as many would consider it a natural living person anymore then I suppose your time cannot be stolen now this time matrix is exactly what is described in the cardinal principles of secondary education Department of the Interior Bureau of Education Bulletin 1918 number 35 a report of the Commission on the Reorganization of Secondary Education appointed by the National Education Association. And this is the copyright uh, printing office uh, or government printing office, Washington, 1918. Here it essentially explains exactly what I just said. Quote, aside from the immediate discharge of these specific duties, every individual should have margin of time for the cultivation of personal and social interests. This leisure, if worthily used, will re recreate or yeah, recreate his powers in enlarge and enrich life, thereby making him better able to meet his responsibilities. See, that's of course the important part here, not the betterment of the student, but rather that individual's ability to meet their responsibilities. Sounds like somebody wants to get their loan back, their loan repaid, right? You have a duty to repay me what I have lent you. Except I don't know exactly what the so-called universal church has ever lent anyone. Anyway, the unworthy use of leisure impairs health, disrupts home life, lessens vocational efficiency, and destroys civic mindedness. The tendency in industrial life aided by legislation is to decrease the working hours of large groups of people. While shortened hours tend to lessen the harmful reactions that arise from prolonged strain, they increase if possible the importance of preparation for leisure. In view of these considerations, education for the worthy use of leisure is of increasing importance as an objective. That's what I said before. They desire to control everybody's time down to the minutest second in order to take and steal everything of importance, all temporal goods from those that are being alienated. It goes on to say to destroy discharge the duties of life and to benefit from leisure, one must have good health. The health of the individual is essential also to the vitality of the race and the defense of the nation. Health education is therefore fundamental. So you can see reading between the lines that they are all here, that this is the foundation to the school system and they are all focused from the alienation of temporal goods viewpoint. Next in this document, we get more explanation of this idea of developing an education system that imposes the time matrix, time taking matrix. Vocational education should equip the individual to secure a livelihood for himself and those dependent on him. To serve society well through his vocation, to maintain the right relationships towards his fellow workers in society, and so far as possible, to find in that vocation his own best development. Notice in this idea, a livelihood is something that people continue to secure, right? You don't, you can't just secure a livelihood. You, that's what most people call salary. But in order to keep that, you have to continue giving your time over, spending your time. And that's the, the not the idea of prosperity, of course. That's the idea of essentially slavery. This idea demands that the pupil explore his own capacities and aptitudes and make a survey of the world's work to the end that he may select his vocation wisely. Hence, an effective program of vocational guidance in the secondary school is essential. Vocational education should aim to develop an appreciation of the significance of the vocation to the community in a clear conception of right relations between the members of the chosen vocation, between different vocational groups, between employer and employee, and between producer and consumer. These aspects of vocational retention, therefore, heretofore neglected, demand emphatic attention. This is naturally not designed 
at all, ever, for the benefit of the person or the individual who is having this imposed upon them. The extent to which the secondary school should offer training for a specific vocation depends upon the vocation, facilities that the school can acquire, and the opportunity that people may have to obtain such training later. To obtain satisfactory results, those proficient in that vocation should be employed as instructors and the actual conditions of the vocation should be utilized either within the high school or in the corporation with the home, farm, shop, or office. Much of the pupil's time will be required to produce such efficiency. And possibly the worst part of this document, in the education of every high school girl, the household arts should have a prominent place because of their importance to the girl herself and to others whose welfare will be directly in her keeping. The attention now devoted to this phase of education is inadequate, and especially so for girls preparing for occupations not related to the household arts and for girls planning for higher institutions. The majority of girls who enter in wage-earning occupations directly from high school remain in them for only a few years, after which homemaking becomes their lifelong occupation. For them, the high school period offers the only assured opportunity to prepare for that lifelong occupation, and it is during this period that they are most likely to form their ideals of life duties and responsibilities. <laughs> So here we should notice some patterns. First of all, they talk a lot about managing the time of the individuals, the subjects, as it were, of this program. Also, they talk quite a great deal about understanding and meeting one's responsibilities and duties. Of course, this is not related to personal responsibility, but rather responsibility and duty to the community, to exterior elements not, of course, to the, even themselves. So that is a main reason, of course, why most people today, pretty much because they've gone through these school systems based off of this document here, and of course the other one, that's why they don't have any concept of personal responsibility. Now, of course, another time waster and inefficient application of time is the idea of having people sick and so if you propagate sickness and you make more people sick, not only will they constantly come in to get better, which of course they'll never get better, but they also waste their own time and and will, will essentially speaking, be less fit, efficient because somebody who's sick is much less efficient than somebody who's well. It takes them longer to complete tasks and do simple things, right? Now, ironically, a lot of things that are considered time wasters are usually in contrast to things that are actually time stealers and time wasters. So a, a common phrase that many have heard is something along the lines of stop playing video games, stop wasting your time, go and study for school. Of course, the implications there being that school is not a time waster itself, which it is, but it's also a time thief, extorts labor from people for their time, from children. Whereas a video game, well, the military uses video games for training purposes. And simulators have long been known to be a use for training to do things. It also teaches efficiency. Video games teach you to be more efficient for your ability to perform within that video game and in comparison in multiplayer games to other players. So you have the social aspect that you have in the school system. You have an efficient learning mechanism and simulation, and you have hands-on application, and you learn quite a great deal of skills from video games. In fact, video games are not time wasters in comparison to the egregious structure of the school system. But we're not trained to think like that because we're trained to think like the cardinal principle. And the fact is that if you're playing video games, then you're not meeting those alleged responsibilities to your community. Instead, you are in fact being responsible to yourself. And that can't happen. Because that is a problem for the alienation of temporal goods on behalf of the universal church. Now, to also get a, a further understanding of this time matrix and some of the other facets that it affects, we can go ahead and look at a tractor. See, a tractor is designed like most automobiles, inefficiently. 
and when the tractor breaks down naturally, the farmer is going to take it to a mechanic. However, nowadays, because of the training of responsibility to community and not personal responsibility, such as running an honest business, the mechanic will only see the benefit of gaining money from the farmer, and so they won't actually fix the problem. They'll simply, say, diagnose a symptom, or they might fix other things that aren't necessary, thus requiring that the farmer again return to another mechanic to get the same thing done to become fleeced be extorted and so not only is the system of the vehicle inefficient but the system of mechanics as an industry itself is equally inefficient and regulated for that purpose to make dishonest mechanics that steal people's money and reduce the efficiency of inefficient machines as a whole, right? They never try to make the machines more efficient. They just always say the same thing. You work with what you got, something like that. But they never try to make it more efficient. They never say, oh, this is a better way we can do this or whatnot. And I expect people that do that in the mechanic industry get fired or get run out of town, run out of business. Now, of course, the same thing as most people are aware is goes with personal vehicles. It has different implications for farmers and other people who possibly even great rely even at, to a greater extent on their vehicles, which is also a design from that idea of responsibility to community and not personal responsibility. But people in general, they think about their responsibility to the community when it comes to their own personal vehicles as well, not their own personal responsibility with their vehicles. See, people are afraid every time that their vehicle breaks down that they won't be able to make it to work thinking about their responsibility to others, not to themselves. Their, of course, vocation, their lifelong livelihood pursuit of their duty and responsibility to something else, some exterior entity, not to themselves. And in that sense, they will, rather than go the best way in repairing their vehicle or look for a more efficient means of transportation, Instead, they'll panic and rush to get it fixed as fast as possible, which means that they will also get fleeced by the dishonest mechanics that roam about today, who are licensed, of course, where all honest mechanics who have personal responsibility towards business, by and large, are non-existent. Well, uh, the problem will not, uh, you know, the problem will happen again, and the same thing will happen again. And thus that, in fact, rewards the idea of fleecing customers, of lying to them, of not trying to make their equipment more efficient, of not doing a good job, essentially just trying to get as much money out of them as possible. This is very well known, despite all of the, uh, <laughs> all the crap on the Internet right now. But either way, this is true. Our system of automobiles and of fixing automobiles is extremely inefficient and was, in fact, designed to be inefficient. Now, one thing that sought to remove the inefficiency as it relates to service, like with mechanics, is the review process online. However, any benefit that was gained from honest reviews, giving a true accounting of the business relations of a particular location was eliminated through the propagation of phony reviews. Now, many of these were done on behalf of robots by computer programs, but they were done on behalf of, in fact, the entities that were supposed to be running the reviews, such as Amazon. Amazon has the ability, just like every other platform, essentially, to remove phony reviews, except they do the opposite. They remove legitimate reviews and leave false ones. Thus, not only is the uh, time constraint of efficiency taken off from the reviews, because then people have to sift through a bunch of phony ones to find any ones that are real, thus wasting their time. But also, if they're all false, then people will waste their time going to dishonest merchants, having trusted the false reviews, of which they will never trust reviews again. Thus, they have um, effectively negated the benefit of the review system and its component, its um, application to increasing efficiency 
of a time-alienated populace. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, economical means marked by careful, efficient, and prudent use of resources. Naturally, any opposition to this imposed, and in many ways criminal, alienation of temporal goods and the alienation of people's time will require a creative approach to efficiency. Anyone who is part of that alienation of temporal goods network naturally will seek to reduce efficiency. So anybody who is contrary to it, in fact, even the people who are having their time alienated, they would naturally want to look towards efficiency and efficiency uh, in practice is in fact a natural human trait. It takes a great deal of effort and time to train the natural inclination towards efficiency out of the human being.